Shin splints have got to be one of the most frustrating things for runners to deal with. Let's break down the three main players and if you truly do have shin splints. The structures of your lower leg are under a lot of stress when you run. That's part of the reason why so many running related injuries happen from the knee down. Your tibia or shin bone has to deal with 9 to 12 times your body weight every time your foot hits the ground. Now all this stress comes from that impact that happens between your foot and the ground, the fact that you're having to deal with gravity, and the muscle contractions that tug on our bones every time our foot hits the ground. And it's been shown that 13.6 to 20% of runners will deal with medial tibial stress syndrome. That's the fancy term for shin splints. But shin splints aren't the only reason why your shin might hurt. There's three different pathologies I want to break down and show you why this might be the cause of your shin pain. Our muscles, tendons, and bones are literally tied to each other. And if we zoom in on the back of the right shin, we see that all of the muscles that help slow our foot down when we run are really close together. These different colors represent three different muscles that serve important jobs in slowing our foot down every time it hits the ground. Those muscles all start on the back of our leg and originate very closely together. They put a lot of stress on our shin. Now around our muscles, tendons, and bones, we have blood vessels. These blood vessels, our arteries and veins, help take nutrients to our muscles. They help take away some waste products and overall just help us function in life. But did you know that all three of those can be causes of pain? We actually still don't know what shin splints are. What we do know is that this tends to present like broad-based pain that might warm up when we run and can be a little bit inconsistent. Now unfortunately, the actual bones of our lower leg can cause shin pain as well. The most common stress fracture that we see are tibial stress fractures, which is where we develop pain often along this portion of the inside of your shin. If we're dealing with a stress fracture, you're often going to report pinpoint pain in a very small area that doesn't warm up and often progressively gets worse the more you continue to try to train and run. It's important for us to differentiate between medial tibial stress syndrome and a stress fracture because we can normally keep training with shin splints. If we're dealing with a stress fracture, we've got to take you out of running for a while. So the behavior and location of your pain can play a big role in what that actual cause is. Now I mentioned before, our muscles and tendons are really close together. So are our blood vessels. These structures actually all sit within four different compartments in our lower leg. And the actual compartment or the thing that holds it all together can get irritated as well. So let's imagine someone took a slice out of your lower leg. This is what it would look like. The orange layer around the outside is representing the skin around your leg. The red is the four compartments in your lower leg and the blue are representing your tibia and your fibula. Now, about 45% of compartment syndrome cases are located in the anterior compartment. If that compartment gets irritated, you're gonna start reporting things like numbness and tingling, potentially weakness in some of the muscles of your foot. You'll also report a lot of relief the second that you stop running. Those extra signs and symptoms, we're not gonna see those with tibial stress fractures and shin splints. And the only way that we diagnose this is if we actually stick a needle in that area and look at how much pressure is present in that compartment. If we're dealing with compartment syndrome, it might be helpful to work on the strength and mobility of some of the muscles in our lower leg. A runner could be a good candidate for gait retraining, specifically focusing on landing with more of a forefoot strike. And in some cases, you might need surgery. There's different things that can cause shin pain, and each has a different management strategy. Hopefully, breaking this down helps you figure out exactly what you're dealing with so you can get on the right plan.